Okay, so we have covered diffusion and osmosis, which are both modes of passive transport. So some schools they cover active transport. If your school does not cover active transport, you can omit the next part of it. Okay. So active transport, as the name suggests, active, which is opposite from passive, will require energy. Okay. So two areas, one happens in animal cells, which is the gut. Gut means your small intestines. The other one is the root hair cells in plants. Okay. So in the gut themselves, you are required to take up glucose molecules which is required for the brain to use it for energy and for cells to use it for energy. Okay. In plants, mineral ions are taken up from the surroundings even though the concentration outside the root hair cells they are lower okay, because the plants will require them for further uses and in times of need, there is still sufficient minerals, there's a buffer for them. Okay, so you can see over here in terms of the energy. Okay, so energy is not just the electrical energy that you know about or the chemical energy in batteries. Okay, every energy has a terminology for it. So for biology, okay, the energy currency that all cells use, both animals and plants, is called ATP. Okay, so I will link the topic on cells here. Okay, so ATP, recall your cells contain this particular organelle. Okay, both your animal cell and plant cell will contain this organelle. Okay, and this particular organelle is called mitochondrion. So mitochondrion is the term for singular, whereas if you are talking about multiple mitochondrion, it will be plural for mitochondrion. Okay. So cells that require large amount of energy will have multiple mitochondria simply because they require a lot more energy that is being produced. And the energy so-called currency that is being used, okay, so this is not an appropriate biological term, just take note, it's just for understanding. So this energy currency which is being utilized is called ATP. Okay, so at this junction, you are not required to know the entire term for this acronym ATP. Knowing ATP will suffice. Okay, you will learn the full form of it when you continue to do biology. So today we covered on these areas. So I would like to make a summary of this, okay, which you will see here. Okay, so we have got diffusion, osmosis and active transport. So diffusion and osmosis, they are only passive. Okay. Whereas active transport will require energy. Okay, so osmosis is usually for water molecules or in very rare circumstances like small molecules. Okay, so solvents versus solutes. Okay, so solvents will be things like water, solutes will be things like your mitochondria. So when my solute is higher than the cells, it means that it is hypertonic. Okay? Whereas if I have got lower solute concentration and I put the cell into a region that has got lower solute concentration that is called hypotonic. Okay, so terminologies that you will have to take note are here, crenation, plasmolysis, lysis, and flaccid. Okay, depending on whether it is in a hypertonic, hypotonic solution or it is a plant or animal cell. Okay, now last but not least, why do you need a high surface area to volume ratio? is to enable efficient exchange of substances okay now this take note that this is just a very brief overview or brief summary of the entire topic so areas like hypotonic hypotonic and the conditions as well as the terminologies you will still have to look at the entire video and assess the notes themselves okay thank you for watching